or you want to say today I will go for a walk. In Norwegian, it will be i dag vil jeg gå på tur. So you will use today and then the verb vil gå på tur. channel i am donita your PNA teacher in norway and i am creating vlogs about my life experiences in norway and i also create tutorials on how to learn the norwegian language and in this video i will share with you what are the major struggles of english speakers when learning the norwegian language so let's start the first one is the alphabet so there are letters in the alphabet that is difficult to pronounce when you are an English speaker. Okay, I can sing the Norwegian alphabet with you. Okay, let's start. You will notice they have additional letters a u o in english we only have five vowels but in norwegian they have additional vowels and that is a u o lare a Øve. Ø. O spise. O. also they don't have the sound of z or z sound zipper zipper in Norse is glideloss eller or the o, the only say set if you listen when i'm singing the norwegian alphabet so they only say set a u now that we are already in pronunciation Norwegian have a lot of silent letters. For example, this sentence: "Hvor dan går det med dig?" So, if you are English speaker, you will pronounce or read this word like this: "Hvor dan går det med dig?" Dig. But it's just how are you? The meaning of word and gorda medai is how are you? So de it is silent t and dai it pronounced differently. E pronounced differently sometimes when it is with other letters. So that is another struggle on learning Norwegian language. And the next struggle or the next difficult thing is about the nouns in Norwegian substantive nouns have gender in Norwegian substantive har tre shon hangshon hunshon intetshon masculine feminine and neutral I already have a tutorial about it and just watch it if you want to learn about the Norwegian nouns. The fourth struggle on how to learn the Norwegian language is the false friend if you are an English speaker. So false friend is a word in one language that resembles a word in another language in spelling or pronunciation but the words have different meanings they called false friends. For example, fart, speed, so fart it means speed in norwegian and there's also a fart word in english that has a different meaning so that is a false friend for example is gift when you will write it or spell it it's just like gift in english but gift means married in norwegian male when you will write it it's like male male in english but in norwegian it is male to paint or paint rape so rape 
I don't want to say the word in English. What's the meaning of rape when you will write it? It means burp. Burp the baby. It's meant or rape. Or rape baby. Istul, it means chair in Norwegian. So that are examples of false friends in Norwegian. So sometimes you will just what? What we're talking about? We're talking about a stool, uh, a rape, <laughs> a gift, or a gift, or just like that. So gift has also another meaning. For example, poisonous gift. It means so false friends sometimes it's very confusing when you are an English speaker and the last but not least the fifth one is the sentence structure so if you will notice that in English we have subject verb and object it is also the same in Norwegian when it is hoved setninger or the main sentence subject verb object for example jeg skal gå på tur Jai is the subject. Skal is a helping verb. Go is the main verb eller hoved verb. Potur is the object. But if we will do it in led setninger and we will use or you want to say today I will go for a walk. In Norwegian it will be idag vil jeg gå på tur. So you will use today and then the verb will go på tur. Most of the English speakers that use English as a medium of learning in Norwegian, they tend to forget to use the verb in the second place. And this is also my struggles. I've been there. <laughs> so I always forgot to use the verb as the second place when I use adverb of time in the beginning of the sentence. So this is in a higher level if you want to learn Norwegian but I hope that you have understand what I am trying to explain to you. These struggles that I have been through when I am learning Norwegian language using English as a medium language. And that's it. I hope that you have learned the struggles and of course that you can relate to in my experiences on learning Norwegian language using English as a medium language in learning. And if you have any video suggestions, don't hesitate to comment below and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for you to be updated when I have new uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye!